Andre Blattler, who was yearling manager, remembers that Northern Dancer was unpredictable. He had a style of his own. If you had him out in the field, I never saw him fly around the paddock. He never raced like a thoroughbred, like stretching out. As I say, he just galloped a little bit, you know? But I never saw him stretching out and really flying, you know? Thoroughbreds are like all great athletes, perfectionists who fret. They are a cross between Arabians and English-bred horses. At about 1,100 pounds, they have panoramic vision and ears that hear the humming of the earth. They can run 40 miles an hour. Nature made them flight animals with minds that want to run. 1962, the Winfields yearling sale. At 14 hands, two and a half inches, or four foot 10, Northern Dancer was only a few inches taller than the average pony. They didn't attract a lot of attention. I was at the sale at Winfield's farm. It was almost as if you were putting Arnold Schwarzenegger next to uh, a 90-pound weakling. He was the runt. He was, he was the runt of the litter. And who, who knew that he was going to develop into a tremendous specimen that he did? At $25,000, he would have been the bargain of the century, but there were no takers. That's the romance of horse racing, too. It it's, can be a crapshoot. You can look at the best yearling in, in a sale and say, my God, you know, he looks like he's going to be a champion, and he, the horse may not be able to get out of his own way. The Winfields team trained all the unsold yearlings under Pete McCann. That 25 could make a great difference if you're using one way or the other. The stateside trainer was Horatio Luro, an Argentine horseman. The colorful Grand Signor could dance a tango, hit a polo ball, and train derby winners. He had a presence about him, and he was a character. Um, when he was in California training horses, he was romancing some of the top Hollywood starlets at the time. And Horatio used to say, horsemen, horses train seven days a week, but not Horatio. The seventh day is for making love. <laughs> that, and he never comes to the racetrack on Sunday. He took that day off. Like his trainer, Northern Dancer had an eye for the ladies. He didn't want to be controlled. He bit and kicked and sulked when he was whipped. Luro had a solution. I think his people handling him thought he should be gelded because he was so wild. They were afraid of him in many cases. But luckily, my father put his foot down. Or it would be a different story. You wouldn't be here inter interviewing me today. <laughs> Thoroughbreds are trained in the first year and start racing by the time they're two. In 1963, no one saw much potential in Northern Dancer. They never taught that much of the horse. You know, they had, they had a whole bunch of horses over him. The big horse, the six million... 1973, Ron Turcott on Secretariat. He was the first Canadian jockey to win the U.S. Triple Crown. Ten years earlier, he rode Northern Dancer in his maiden race. He was told not to use the whip. I'd have probably got beat if I didn't touch him. So I just uh, got my, my whip into my left hand and just sneak it to the, to the outside and I just hit him one time. He, he just took off and we're at the 16th pole now and this is, he just exploded. Once he turned for, uh, turned for home and in the stretch, he, could, he just, boom, gone. He, he was like a little jackrabbit. He was that fast. That woke him up. I mean, that's, that's when he became a man. He was a boy before and now he became a man. Anyway, I won the race with him. I told Laura that he was the best two-year-old in Canada. You could drive him through a wall. He was a stocky horse, you know. He, everybody says, oh, the little horse. He wasn't tall, but he was he was heavy. My God, he had his chest on him like a secretariat. The Remsen in New York State, 1963. Northern Dancer won his first pre-derby race. But there is no straight path to greatness. 
Northern Dancer had a quarter crack in his left hoof, enough to retire him. They tried a radical new patch. It seemed to work. Northern Dancer won the Flamingo Stakes in Florida with the legendary Willie Shoemaker, the shoe. He runs with quick, short, sharp strides, not the classic flowing locomotion of the rangier kind. Then they won the Florida Derby. But the U.S. press thought the little horse couldn't win the Kentucky Derby. And the shoe abandoned Northern Dancer for Hill Rise, a Californian. Nothing could stop EP, and Canadians were in the mood to wave the flag. This is the 60s. We were pretty nationalistic in the 60s. Think of it. We were coming up to Expo 67. The flag had just been redesigned. Um, we're almost 100 years old as a country. And here's Northern Dancer. Of course he's going to win the Kentucky Derby. The Kentucky Derby, the most legendary race in America. At the end of a mile and a quarter track, a place in history and a garland of red roses. Before Northern Dancer, most horses in the winner's circle were American. As they have since 1875, vast crowds surge into Churchill Downs, Kentucky for America's greatest horse race. If you own a thoroughbred, nothing beats winning the Kentucky Derby. Horse racing is nothing but hope. And um, you're living for that great moment in the day when your horse wins, whether you have a bet on him or not. Because don't forget, this was a national thing in Canada. It was like Paul Henderson's goal in the 72 uh, uh, World Championships against the Russians. Northern Dancer was carrying Canada's hopes that afternoon in uh, Louisville. April 1964, Northern Dancer arrived by van. That's Hill Rise over there, yeah. Hill Rise, his opposition, was flown in from California. Everyone was sizing them up. That's a nice size horse. A lot bigger horse than the dancer. Hill Rise was the outright favorite. Oh, yeah. Pedro. Hill Rise was the horse to beat in the Kentucky Derby. Mm -hmm. And at that time, I remember Shoe saying, he kind of laughed it off and said, well, uh, a good big horse, and Hill Rise was a big horse, will beat a good little horse any day. May 2nd, 1964. Bill Hartack, a previous derby winner, had been chosen to ride Northern Dancer. People were here to see the best three-year-olds on the continent. The pony from Canada was the youngest, not yet three, and he didn't look like a winner. With Northern Dancer going down there now, number seven. White splash on his face, and there are three white stops. The 90th run for the Roses sees number 11, Hill Rise, go to the post as a favorite, while the Derby crowd has made Northern Dancer second choice. The race is seen as a duel between these two. He wore a black mask. He made his owners nervous that day. He didn't want to get into the starting gate. We're all set, ready for the start. Oh! We're away to a good start. Mr. Brick on the inside veered out and shut off quadrangle. And it is Mr. Brick in the lead as they come down the stretch. And moving from the outside is Royal Shuck. Will Red is in between horses. Quadrangle is running fourth. The scoundrel is fifth. Hill Rise is running sixth. Northern Dancer is seventh to three leaders. They've got a quarter of a mile to go. And here they come out of the turn and into the home stretch. Northern Dancer on the lead. Down the stretch now with Northern Dancer out in front. Hill Rise and it's Roman Brothers coming through along the inside. The scoundrel is still third. Roman Brothers fourth. Quadrangle fifth. Down the stretch now. Northern Dancer out in front by a length. Hill Rise is gaining on him. He's coming to the wire. It's going to be tight. Northern Dancer gets it. Northern Dancer by a long head. Hill Rise second. And that day, he ran a hole in the wind. He never, never, never stopped. He just kept on going. And he ran two minutes flat, and people went, oh, my God. He, this horse. Every year at Derby time, you think, you think back to his race. You can almost, I can almost see the whole race in my mind's eye. And here comes Hartack with uh, the answer now on the outside. He's, uh... There was an opening off the rail 
uh, just at the head of the stretch. And when the opening appeared, Northern Dancer, being small and agile, just darted into it like a fullback. They're coming around and moving real easy with Hill Rise coming up right behind them. He, he, he's like a Maserati. He's absolutely, he was perfect. And a big horse couldn't have handled, it's like a sports car, couldn't have handled that kind of track. But he's moved to the front. And right behind him is Hill Rise. Northern Dancer has his head down and he's he's just going for the wire and he's saying, you're not gonna get by me, I don't care how far we go or how fast you run, I'm gonna run faster. He was flying and Northern Dancer, does he look like a Canada goose? I mean, he, he literally at the wire had his neck stuck out like this. And I mean, he, he, he won by, you know, that much. 